In the following diagrams, the horizontal line represents the principal axis, and where these lines meet is called the pole. Also shown are the conjugate foci, as well as the distances to the doubled focal lengths. A light ray that passes through the pole continues undeflected. A light ray that travels parallel to the principal axis will pass through or will appear to have passed through a focus. A diverging lens spreads light out as if it had come from a focus. The effect of the lens is the same no matter where the object is placed. The image is virtual, upright and reduced in size. Diverging lenses are used in spectacles to correct for short-sightedness. Diverging lenses may be biconcave, plano-concave or meniscal. For a converging lens, the position of the object in relation to the focal length and twice the focal length will affect what is seen. If the object is beyond twice the focal length, a real, inverted, diminished image will appear. A camera uses this arrangement. A converging lens may be biconvex, planoconvex or meniscal. If the object is between the pole and a principal focus, the situation is quite different. The image is virtual, upright and magnified. This is how a handheld magnifying glass would work. Finally, if the object is between the focal length and twice the focal length, it's again different. Now the image is real, inverted, but magnified. This is the optical principle behind a projector. This formula connects the object distance U, the image distance V, and the focal length of the lens F. Unfortunately, there is more than one sign convention for U, V and F. We will take F as positive for a converging lens and negative for a diverging lens. U will be positive for an object in front of the lens and U will be negative for an object that's behind the lens. On the other hand, V is positive for an image behind the lens. V is negative for an image in front of the lens. 